for coming to um, this open studio on this uh, sunny but chilly day. I always feel like I start with a weather report anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all. We do, don't start with that. What's the weather like? <laughs> so anyway, in, um, you know, and some of you know that what I do is I do paint very seasonally. So, you know, once, once the snow's gone, I'm not painting any more snow scenes. I've kind of moved on into uh, spring and, there's a there's an overlap and you know one of the things that I find uh, helpful in that is one I'm a plein air painter so I'm you know I like to be tuned into what the the weather is like for painting outdoors and then that translates into the studio so for instance if I'm painting a winter scene and it's a sunny day and I am in the middle of uh or the beginning of May I don't have anything to look outside to reference what the sun looks like on the snow. <clears throat> so, you know, I, I find that if you're a studio painter, having that connection with what's happening outdoors is really handy because it, it is, it's sort of like today it is sunny. The painting I'm doing, the photograph's not all that sunny, but I'm just gonna kind of up the the sunlight that's that's in the photograph. And I'll explain that. Excuse me, I gotta cough again. <laughs> don't know why I haven't coughed all day <laughs> but anyway so let me take you through the the process today was a what's on my easel uh open studio and what that means is I am going to show you something that I'm working on in progress and um I know I had different ideas percolating so it was a matter of yesterday narrowing things down and today getting things set up. And it turns out today was a really great day for me because I did not have very many obligations, which means I could spend a fair amount of time getting things ready and organized. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of preview of uh, you know how I uh, go about getting things ready. Some of it you may have heard before, but you know it changes with every painting. So for instance, this is the, the photo right here. Let me just turn that slightly. This is the photo. Okay, not all that terribly exciting. It was uh, April uh, of, I believe it was last year that I took it. So seasonally, it's it's springtime, so that's good. But the uh, there's, a, there's a bit of a cloud mass back there. So what I want to do is I want to take out some of the cloud in there so there's a little bit more light on it. So I've got some light that is falling in here through the dunes. And I think you may have uh, seen last year, I did some dune paintings, uh, some small ones, kind of prepping for doing a larger one. You know, and as things happen, I never really did a really larger one. So I, that was one of the things that was on my list. I wanna do a big dune scene. So taking this right here, and I, what I did is I, I uh, took a photo and I blew up my sketchbook so that you could, well, I blew up the photograph of my sketch in my um, gray tone paper with black and white china markers. And what I did, you can uh, see is I've, I've created farm, I'm thinking of the motion of those dunes and they felt a little flat in the photograph. So I gave more of an arch here so I can feel that that dune is just, uh, you know, uh, sweeping down to the bottom uh, right hand side, well, the middle bottom right hand side. And I created a few more flows of uh, smaller dunes that you'd have to come to, to reach this larger one in the foreground. I've kicked up the, uh, the grasses in the, the foreground and I've reduced the amount of grasses that are actually in the photograph. I, you know, th there's plenty of dunes that don't have a lot of grasses and who's to say how much grass was there. So I took the, my prerogative and uh, decided that what I was going to do with this is to show a little bit more of the way the light uh, moves around within the, uh, the grasses that are here. Now, we're, I'm on a dune that's up high and I'm looking down the dune and off into the distance. So I'm in this little kick right now. The uh, last painting, I think I posted that in a newsletter. That was the same sort of feeling where we're looking out over 
quite a distance and we're feeling that dip and then we're rising again to the horizon, which is way back here. And even in the photograph, there's this lovely shaft of light that is giving that silvery glow that we often see, uh, you know, in the Cape waters. And this is Sandy Neck. It's the back, back road. I didn't take anybody out there this spring. I'm planning to in the fall. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a, a, a great day out. And, you know, we, um, we have permission to go up to the top of this one dune. We follow, uh, you know, um, you know, environmental uh, hiking rules and we don't hike all over the, the grasses or anything. So it's really just quite panoramic when you're up there. So this is this is what you're looking at. And there is a road down here. Whether or not I'm going to put the, well, it's a dirt road that um, four-wheel drive uh, vehicles go on. I'm not sure if I'm going to put it in. I haven't drawn it in because kind of, I also like that uh, feeling in paintings where uh, there's a hint of human interaction with the, environment. You know, the majority of what I do is more of a positive interaction, but, you know, I have done some paintings where, you know, it's something that really has interfered with the environment, but most of it is positive. I guess, you know, whatever you do, it's it's based on your own personality. So I tend to be a positive person. I'm painting that sort of thing. So this may appear. This right here could be almost like a mirror image of this. So it's very possible when I get to the painting point, you know, I noticed that in the sketch, look at that. You know, that's like the sort of thing that you like could totally miss. So I may, I, I may drop it a little lower so that, you know, I don't have these two little shapes that are way in the background that are almost like, almost exactly in the same spot and distance from the edges. So we'll play around with that. But I just wanted to explain how I take a photograph and then um, reimagine it and that flowing. So you're going to see me do a little bit of the flowing because what I'm going to do is explain what I'm doing with this board <laughs> that's behind me. So twofold. What, what, what I'm going to do is show you the next step of the board. And while that dries, what I'm going to do is just show you how I start uh, choosing my color palette. I'm not really sure if I'm actually even going to get around to painting on the board today, but you will see me do a little mini uh, painting that was really the color study for the this large painting. And uh, as you'll notice, I'm making it, it's showing right here. I knew I'd prepped a board. I prepped these boards in advance, so I have them ready. So I had an 18 by 24 board that was already prepped and ready. It had a um, coat of gesso on, well, at least one coat. It might have two. It was a while ago I did it uh, on the front, one on the back. And then I've taken pumice ground and a rather large brush. So I have sweeping strokes. Let me sw switch this around so it's a little bit more centered. So there's sweeping strokes of the pumice. And I love that sort of random feel to the, uh, to the uh, marks of the brush. And I also use brushes that are a little stiffer, not brand new. So what happens, I kind of get like little ridges that show up. And in, in that, what you have to do is you have to think, and it's the same if you're putting down pastel, even on a sheet of paper, if you're using a colored sheet of paper is it's a color. So have that become part of the painting. So choosing your color is important. The value of that color is important. And from there, taking and incorporating it into certain parts of your, of your painting. So I wanted this feeling. Oh, yeah, I started telling you that. Uh, don't get carried away there, Betsy. 1824 I started with. So what I did, I have the sizes proportional. And I don't have my proportion wheel within uh, reach here, uh, but these are sizes that are proportional because I want to do a sketch that really is just a smaller version of an 18 by 24. So this is a four and a half by a six, uh, this little sketch right here. And the uh, paper that I have uh, cut is waiting down here for its turn. And that has uh, that is also the same size. So um, it, it, hint, 
if you're doing sketches, make sure your sketches matches your finished size. And if you don't know what finished size you're doing, at least have a rough idea that, you know, uh, whatever size sketch you're doing can translate into a 9 by 12, 12 by 16, 12 by 18, 11 by 14, you know, some of those standard sizes. Because there's nothing worse than having a really great sketch that then you have to stretch it to get on your paper or your board because you've not thought of it translating from your little sketch to your big painting. And um, let me see if I do have this. I have to walk in front of the uh, No, not sure where I was using it earlier. So I'm not really sure where I put it. Of course, I have three of them around here. But anyway, I'll do, I'll do another thing with the uh, proportion wheel. You can buy them at uh, Dick Blick. They're super handy. Um, they're easy to figure out how to use, uh, you know, so it's it's well worth it. So anyway, um, what I've done here is after the two coats of pumice have dried, I put on a layer of uh, acrylic ink. And what I used is I used a combination and I use, I'm not, you know, there's other brands out there. This just happens to be the brand that I use. So I use the F, uh, FW and this one here is the process yellow and I mixed it with this one here which is flame orange so I toned it and this is the tone right here okay and then what I did using and this is what you're going to see me do oh geez I didn't close that very well it's all over my hands now um let's put that there just give me a minute uh, yeah, I had a question. Yeah. Um, could you use uh, like watercolor? There's like liquid watercolors that I, I use. Could you use that instead of the acrylic ink? Absolutely. You can. Okay. You, you can. You can. Um, if you're if you're toning or you're doing a, a, a value uh, underpainting. Uh, yes, absolutely. You can use that. Uh, the And most of the papers take that. The papers you'd want to be careful what it, with is Sennelier. That's, that's, uh, that can be problematic. Uh, it lifts the, uh, the grit, the, the, the base for the uh, pastel surface. And um, pastel mat can be a little finicky when it's wet. It works fine. You just can't touch it when it's, it's wet. And I have been told that it's better with water than it is with rubbing alcohol. You're going to see why, one of the reasons why I used it is, is I used that deconstruction. So I put it all in one tone. And then what I did, and you're going to see me do that right now, I went in and uh, I actually picked up and pulled out areas. So I'm going to get in here and uh, see this light that I've started right here. This is the large dune right here. This is the large dune right here. This is that dune right back here. Okay, this one's a little lesson. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start bringing out the um, the light that's here. Not rather than adding more um, paint to this, I'm actually rubbing it out. And there's a couple of different things that you can use to rub out. Um, I didn't find this very helpful on this board, and I think and I and I do like using. Uh, pipe foam insulation, but it seemed to be pulling on it. I'm going to give it another try so you can see that. I did use uh, a heavy duty paper towel, of which I'm always cautious when I use paper towel because I'm worried that the uh, rough surface is actually going to leave fibers behind, but it didn't. So, you know, I was pleased with that. And then I also used one of these guys right here, uh, which is a foam brush. And that one worked pretty good uh, also. So you can already see it starting to come out. So that deconstruction means that what I'm doing is, is I'm putting paint down and then I'm taking it away. That's where the watercolor would be difficult. Not saying you couldn't do that, but you don't want to, um, it, but you'd, you'd want to practice it first, uh, you know, just because of the uh, type of medium that it is. And also, I don't use watercolor that much. So, you know, whenever people ask me questions about watercolor, I always feel like I have to preface it with 
check it first. <laughs> okay, so I can see that I've got this light falling here. So I'm gonna start coming in. I'm gonna start with this one first so you can see how each of these works because I can fix anything if it doesn't work. And I'm spraying rubbing alcohol on here. See what's happening? That is coming right off. And then I can tap it with the paper towel. And I did a little, um, a little YouTube, not YouTube, uh, Instagram reel of me doing this in the first place. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna post that later. So you can see how that works. But look at the way I can kind of control. I want some, oops, pointed in the wrong place. Yeah, if I pointed in the wrong place, no, no big deal. All I have to do is just not. And if I pick up some of the pumice ground, no big deal, because I can always put a layer of pumice over the top of it. Some pumice uh, do ha have uh, leave almost like a little bit of a, uh, muted, uh, what word am I trying to think of? Uh, it kind of dulls it. Some of them are actually a little bit more clear, opaque, translucent. Okay, let's, okay, so I'm trying to create this light that's coming through here. And you can see this is going right back to the, to the whiteboard. So I don't want to put too much I'm following this over here. Like big strokes. This is, uh, you know, I, I, the best way to treat this is if you're doing something that's very abstract. Because you're going to go in with your. Oh, well, there must have been something on there. That's all right. See, I can I can go over that afterwards, but let me just lift a little bit of it up. Okay, so let's see that. So that worked out pretty good. I'm going to show it here with the, and when I was using the paper towel, yeah, look at that paper towel. That works. That works out really nice too. A little, little softer. Don't have to rub quite as hard. You know, just experiment. Yeah, you know, I'm getting just little bits of fiber that are uh, falling off, but considering this surface is a rather rough surface, that's really not going to make much of a difference at all. Okay, so I can see I've got this, I've got this almost like fingering out, fanning out. Okay, so I want this to fan out a little bit more right here. It's handy, I can look over at the camera and I can see what it looks like there. Let me fold this over. And that was good. just get a little bit right here. And of course, you know, if you, you didn't like the deconstruction sort of method, what you could do, oh, geez, that one's not coming off very well. There were a couple areas I put in a, a couple extra coats. There it is, just needed to. I would let something, okay, so see this? Okay, see the way that's beginning to flow a little, coming down? You know, this is, so just think of it in terms of, Okay, and the way that light is falling, I'm just giving it a light rub. I don't want it to get too light down here, but I do have this area right here where I wanted it to feel like there was a little bit more light. So I'm just gonna come in here and not make it as light as that, or as that, because this is hidden. Oh, here, you know what? Let me try it with this now. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. That's actually, oh, look at that's just peeling it right up. And this is why I'd let that dry really well before I start using it, because then I'll be able to blow off um, either with a blow dryer or just blowing on it, uh, you know, some of the particles of the acrylic ink. Oh, yeah. So this one works out well, too. You know, soften it a little bit around the edges. Because I don't, before I go anywhere, I would just want to, okay, I feel like I need to make that a little bit lighter up there. Now on the screen, it may be looking white, but it really is a very pale yellow. And if I feel like I have taken uh, too much off and I need a color, 
I can always come back in and put a color in those areas if I got a little overzealous with my deconstructing. Okay, so if you were going to do this with, um, let's say, acrylic paint, what you acrylic dries really quick. And these acrylic inks um, are an acrylic, clear, clearly acrylic, acrylic based paint that actually mixes well with, um, just going to put a little bit right here, with mixes really well with acrylic paints. But what you want to um, remember is the actual acrylic paint will dry very fast. I don't think this dries quite as fast as acrylic paint. Oil, you can do this very easily with oil because oil does not dry uh, super fast at all. And you don't, you certainly wouldn't want to put a, one of those uh, agents that actually slows it down. And I look at a couple little areas in my, right in here. I don't want this area back here to be quite as light as the area in the foreground, even though we've got that glitter that's going on back there. So I'm just going to focus in on this little area right here. And I'm just going to lift that. That lifting is really, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you can, like I said, you can fix it. I'll just drag it over. And that's a fairly straight horizon. That's something that I would definitely, you know, cockeyed horizons, unless you're trying to prove a point that you're like in a plane and you're, you know, <laughs> ready to land. Uh, you want your, I want my horizon straight. Yes, question. Yeah, Betsy, and I know you've answered this question a thousand times, but so all that you're doing here is the, you know, the preparation of the board. You're going to cover it all with pastel so Correct. in the in the world where you're submitting something in for a pastel painting this would be considered completely pastel even though everything going on underneath is acrylics and stuff right correct correct okay the the pastel shows and unless they say differently in the prospectus that you receive it'll say 80 percent of the top surface has to be pastel so uh, that, that's all. If I wanted to keep some of this with the ink showing, that's absolutely fine. I just have to make sure that the end result, 80%, is, um, is actually pastel. Good question. Since this is the time of year that people are, we, yeah, well, let's see what shows are coming up. We just had the, uh, oh, look at, see, I should have left that alone. I'm going to have to let that dry. I don't know what I did. But that's gotten all like dirty mucky. So we're going to leave that because that's, <clears throat> I just wanted you to see. Do you notice the difference in how much of that light has kicked up now with that just taking off some of this uh, base color that I had? Now, what I would also did is I'd come in with a darker and I'd mixed the orange with the yellow, only I had a little bit more orange. And I started putting in uh, some areas that were darker. Um, you know, just, oh, that's really annoying, Betsy. Yeah, that's too bad. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna get a couple areas that are darker. So I'm kind of like playing this balance of light areas, dark areas. Uh, you know, most of my contrast is going to be in the foreground, which is why I have, even though there's that light back there, Okay, that's still going to feel like it's a, a light that's hitting that lovely uh, bit of water. This is actually Barnstable Harbor right here, for those of you that are on the Cape. Cape. So from the dune we're at, we're facing Barnstable Harbor in the marsh here. So the, the, I feel like I've got the light going here, okay? A little bit subdued here and not a light, lot of light here. I can always add that in afterwards, but even in my sketch, I've got reduced light that's falling over here. So this is what I'm going to do. Let me get out my mixing cup. Okay. And I had decided that I was going to use a, a really nice warm color. And, you know, a lot of times I wind up doing um, violets and blue. I love Purple Lake. And then there's this blue that's just wonderful. But this one, I felt like I wanted to have something that was a little bit more uh, earthy. 
Uh, so I have a, a burnt umber that's here and I've done a little test uh, swatch of the color that I like. So it's got a nice warm feel to it. I'm gonna stick that. So the acrylic inks, you have to give them a good shake. So I'm gonna, and while this shakes, that's gonna, okay. I'm gonna put that in the orange I've already used. I'll put a little dropper in here because I don't really need a whole load of it. And just enough, uh, enough of um, the orange so that I wind up having uh, like a middle, middle dark value. I don't want it to be too light in that middle end. I want it to feel like it's a little darker. Where's my brush? There it is. Okay, I'm going to use this brush right here. You can see it's already been used for acrylic inks. How's the color look on this? The hopefully it doesn't look too dark. Does it feel like it looks a little too dark, or is it just my monitor, the angle it's on? What do people think? Look all right. Okay, let's turn this around. Let's just do a little test swatch here on the side. Okay, so let's do a little test swatch. Oh, still a little too dark. I've got to add a little bit too much. This is why it's handy to have little swatches of paper around so you can just test them out. Now, you know I love to draw, so I'm going to get a little bit of a drawing line in here so it feels... Probably start with it. This is whenever you're mixing colors. If you start, well, let me test this now. I start with yep a little bit more orange. I should have started with the orange and added the brown to it to tell you the, the the sienna to it. That was my own fault here. And whenever I mix too much color, what I do is I just paint it on another board. You know, because I'm not going to throw it out. I mean, I probably only have a tablespoon here anyway. Okay, this one's looking pretty good. This one's looking pretty close. Okay, so I'm going to get in here. I'm going to look at my sketch here, and I'm just going to. Okay, and I'm just going to get some of these darker areas that I had in here. And we're gonna come down. I'm getting that area out there that's out on the horizon, keeping it super loose. There's these trees that are growing up here. And this is where that road is. It's coming right around there. And then there's more trees over on this side. So we're just going to get this. Okay, I'm not trying to, I'm keeping it, keeping it loose. Don't, don't get all wrapped up in the. Oh, well, that's like this. I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to. I'm just going to pat it so it's uneven. I had to rig up this shelf because I realized this board is pretty heavy board. Um, so I, I rigged up a shelf with um, these guys right here so I could get it up on the get it up on the easel. My uh, this is my newer easel, my older easel. Uh, you know, had like a little shelf. Okay, so this has got a little bit of a dark area right here, but I don't want to. So I'm just going to get that in and I'm going to go like this. Some so, Betsy, I have an, another question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Probably Marianne. so many more questions. <laughs> so, if, if I were doing this, I would um, perhaps get concerned at some point that I was not going to have enough tooth when it came to actually putting the pastel on. So I would be inclined to want to put like more pumice ground on over all the acrylic ink. Would, would you do that? Would you consider doing that? Or would you wait to see, I would uh, wait to how, see. how it was handling the pastel? Or Yeah, what? I would wait to see how it, how, how it was handling. You can usually tell, right? You can look, you can see, that's why I'm doing this over here. See the way you can, yeah, I can see, see it. The yeah, that's all from the texture. Uh, but yes, yeah, and that would be a, a justifiable um, uh, concern that if you were uh, filling the tooth, 
with too much. Now there's going to be tall guys right here. I'll just put this in so you guys can see. All of this can get covered up, so I'm not actually worried if, uh, but I want to get in here before it dries again, and I want to soften this because, see, go to here, and I'll just soften it. Those dried already. So I'm going to put pastel over this. So this is just to lay in, and that's a little, that's a little bit funky over there, but that's okay. Um, let me just come in. Okay, that was to show you how the texture is showing off. And I'm just going to come in. I'm just going to do this and get a couple areas that are a little bit darker at the base, right in here. And again, what I'm looking at, this guy just went like loopy. I don't know what happened to him. If you're afraid you're gonna smear things too much, just pat it. So just look at that, look at that. So that line, the lines, so now I've got even more of a contrast and I have only really tried to hit those specific areas where it's really dark. I've not hit the parts of the grass, if we look at the photograph, that are actually a little bit more lighter. I am trying to hit these darker patches. And remember, I added a little bit more grass in here and I took a little bit of grass out over there. Actually, that was, and see where the light is? That light was my other reminder. That's where I wanted the light going through. So I'm starting to see a little bit of a pattern. And this is where I would come in and say, look at these guys right here. Look at that. They're about the same distance apart. Not good. So this is what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to. Add a little bit on this side for that guy. And then let's see if this works. I'm going to come in. This is where that deconstructing, think, think very abstractly in your head when you're doing this. Okay. And it's really fun. If you want to try something to loosen up, and we're going to, we're going to be doing a little bit of this in the Next class on teaching. There we go. Okay, so now these guys are close and that one's a little farther away. I know that's a little mucky there. No big deal because I'm going to be putting stuff over it. This is just all underneath. So at this point, what I would do is I would leave it alone because I feel, oh, I feel like I need to put a, wait a second. I feel like I need to have like a little bit of an edge here. So I'm just going to come in here. and just to create that edge. And I'm gonna soften it again. Okay, and let's get that. There. Look at these guys are a little bit parallel. So I'm gonna come and I'm gonna give that a little bit more of a sweep and bring it down. So it doesn't feel so. That's the sort of thing that you can look at, you know, at this point. Now these guys are no longer parallel. I've got more, I've got a shape that this one goes like that and this one's going down. So there's going to be, this is the, the land that's way down um, in the valley as such. And then these are the, the flow of the dunes going this way. This one feels a little stilted to me, to tell you the truth. I have to be careful because look at, I'm going to try to probably make the same mark. I'm going to leave that alone because I don't want to fuss around with it too much. You know, I've got the ideas I wanted in here. And now I'm going to come through and there's these lovely shadows that are underneath these, these guys are sweeping all over the place. So I'm just going to put sweeping lines around here. And what is going to happen is, is they're going to show up when I, when I paint, I can leave a little bit of them. Let's see, I'm up here, there'll be a couple of sweeping few couple of little directions. Not as much there because those guys are farther away. So that's, and this gives you that direct directionality. So I can see more now. Now I've got that uh, variation of value. You notice pastel painters, we usually paint dark to light. Well, in this case, I started with a, a light middle value and then I deconstructed and I took out and I put in the lights 
and then I came in, and that's not really all that dark to tell you the truth. This is probably on a value bar. Uh, it's probably just past the middle end. It's it's really not dark. I got a couple areas down here. So that's going to dry. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do for the color study. And that is, let me just put this to the side so I don't knock it over and have paint on the ground. Now, this is on a shelf that I made. And I had, it's just... Uh, duct tape holding it up so i'm just going to put this over to the side and we're going to come up here okay uh when you have, when you prep for your work if you prep in turn and think in terms of having multiple things ready um and i do i mean clearly when i'm doing an open studio i make sure i'm really prepped but um as or as best as I can be. Wow, it doesn't really go in there. Okay. These are the tones that are underneath. Okay, not counting that dark because that dark is really just the uh, for those darker shaded areas. So I'm going to get in here. I'm going to um, get my sketch right in here. This is this is the demarcation line right there. This I just had to test my colors. This tone here, clearly it's not the same as this, so I'm going to be testing the colors down here from my darker orangey color, not counting this one right here. Oh, you know what I can do? Let me do this. I'm going to put the dark one right here. Okay. And, I, and by the time I get there, I can test the dark colors. Always test your pastel sticks on uh, the color that you're painting on. Okay, so if I paint something on all these yellows here, and then I go and I test it on a piece of um, uh, white, the colors are going to look totally different on a sheet of white than they are on here. So I'm going to test them right here. Another thing that I do is uh, when I was doing uh, another dune, I keep all my dune colors together. Now I have enough pastels to do that. And yes, I do go in and snag colors out of it when I want to, uh, if I need a color that I know is in this dunes box. So I already had a stack of colors that I had used. And you've seen this before, because after I won this, I did a little demo on using this, which is a portrait set, perfect for dune colors. So I use it for dunes. Uh, I don't do portraits. And if I did, I would probably be using um, a variety of colors, not just, okay, wow. Uh, yeah, Betsy's so prepared, she doesn't have a pencil. Oh, there's a pencil. <laughs> okay, let's just quickly get this stuff down. I'm gonna stand over to the side. Okay, that goes up a little bit, no big deal. I'm gonna cover that anyway. There is that background. Here, I've got this. I'm gonna just sweep it down this way. And I had that over here. And this is all that it's back there. Pastel goes over a uh, pencil, so don't worry about that. And this is where there's this lovely dip. And that's the, that's what I'm going to really try to create in the painting. And then there's this flow. This is what I mean by the flow. There's another slight rise right here, but people walk through this area. Dunes, you don't want them to feel flat. Well, you know, the same with fields, anything at all like that. You know, uh, you know, if there's a contour to it, and then here's where the plants are right along here, and then I want it to feel like it's so. These sorts of lines give me that uh, directionality that I need uh, for my strokes. And I'm just going to move this in just a touch so it's a little closer for you guys. So just give me a minute. And let's see. Let's see how that looks. I think I can go in a little bit further. Just one second. Any questions while I'm just zooming? Okay, this is Pastel Matt. Sky says everything, so I'm going to get some sky in there. 
And I've already said it's a, it's got a level of cloud, but um, we're gonna gonna get a pretty distinct blue in here. I'm gonna sweep up with a cloud, and I can knock that blue down. Another thing that I do, so I said I was going to test it here. This is a middle value, so I'm going to test it right there. Ooh, look at that. Look at how that golden color is going to look. That's really nice. It's got a slightly, oh, I don't want to put anything on there. I think it's sturdy, but I just don't want to overdo it. Get your basic colors. Okay, let's try this guy. This guy's same. It's a little bit lighter. And that can be with it. Yeah, so that's color studies are really fun because you want to know something. You don't have to do them perfectly. You're just getting colors in there to see how the color looks. Oops. Okay, okay. Look at that's gonna look really nice on here. Okay, you know what I was just thinking now. For demo purposes, it probably would have been a great idea if I actually had toned this. I thought it was better to show you it like that, but you're, I think you're getting the idea there. I'll wind up with this little, okay. So then I've got this shock of, there's a bit of uh, land that's back there. And I'm gonna put down a fairly light, let's see this. This is a little darker back there. So a little bit of a violet. It might be a little bit. I'm going to go over a little bit of that blue there and thin that out a little bit for the land that's back there. Make that a little bit bigger so we can see it. Because that's a little bit on the darker. A little darker, middle, a little lighter. And we're going to come in with, okay, this one here is like an aqua. And I thought this aqua, let's see what the aqua, that because that's going to be light back there. I really want that little bit of a glow to happen back here. So I'm thinking that this, and this is where that little estuary comes in. And that's going to go over. I like to, oh, I'm going to take and put a little bit of that color up in here too. I can just play around there, just, just enough through there. Now, I, I like doing the sky first because what happens is the sky kind of informs what's going on in the land. And I did take out some of the clouds that were there. And if I feel as though I need to bring in some sky, I can certainly bring in some sky and I would probably use, come in and use this color right in here. And I could just break it up if I wanted to. This one's slightly violety. I can change my mind later, but I like the idea of the violet in there because the violet against the yellow undertone could really give a nice little um, uh, vibration when the two, if that yellow shows through just the way it does right here. Lovely vibration. Yeah, I wish I'd toned that. This, I just, did, I don't know where my brain was. I guess I didn't think of that part. I was so, I was having so much fun with that board. Okay, a little local color going on, but this is like a muted green. We're just going to put this down. This is in the darker area right here. Okay, it's like a bluey green. So we're just going to get a little bit of that in here. And then it just came down and around. I'm not going to do all the little uh, grasses that are there. And then there's a little bit more over on this side. So we're just going to just go like that. And by having a bluey green that's back there, what happens is, is you know, it kind of goes along with that whole idea of atmospheric perspective and the colors as they go farther back get a little duller and a, oh, I'm just run right off, a little duller and a little um, more muted. So this is a lovely, even if you let that orange show through, it's still muted. I gotta not put these here because there's, I think they're gonna roll right off. Okay, and that grassy color. Let's see, this is the one that I chose, and this is a muted, um, right up here, right here, middle tone. It's a muted green, and it's a muted yellow green. 
It almost could, it could almost appear to be tan, um, but it does have a yellow green uh, feeling to it. And when I start putting it in here next to the other colors, you'll be able to see that. I'm gonna thin that down right up there. Come in. Tell you, I love little color studies. Sometimes these the little paintings that I wind up doing, I really enjoy because they tend to be a little bit, uh, they're fresh. You know, they don't have all the angst of getting things perfect. You know, and I think that's one of, uh, one of the things that we all strive for is to keep it a little looser. That goes right in there. That could actually use a little bit of another green on top of it. And I have one that's a little bit lighter and feels a little greener. I don't want to do too much way in the background, but I just drag a little bit of that over here because we do have light that's going to be falling in here. So it would make sense that there's a, and remember my photograph is a little more overcast than what I'm doing. So I'm superimposing the idea that there's a little bit more light. So that yellowy green kind of starts coming a little more forward than that more muted uh, yellow green. Okay, let's get the shadows of the, and I do have a violet here, you know, uh, it's a, it's a semi-muted violet, and that's where the darkest area is and our, uh, without the shadow right there, but this is where it's going right here. So it's got a little bit of um, intensity that shows up uh, because of the, a bluey nature to this violet, which is, uh, so I'm just gonna do that, right? You know all those dark things that I just painted? So this would be going right over the dark, uh, the dark that I painted. I get these in here and over here. I don't, these guys are gonna be, I'm just gonna, no, I had just a couple right in here. And then this guy's sweeping down over here little bit right there. So we're gonna, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just get this color. I know I don't have it in the, the other thing, but I, this is where that sweep is. So I'm just gonna come over that a little bit with the lines because I can cover that up. And that, see the way that's creating that? Well, that's, and then let's see the dune colors. And I, I like doing these, um, because what happens is, is I wind up having, um, okay, my, my mind was thinking and doing at the same time. I don't want that to have uh, as much uh, light on it as these. So I have to try to find a color on the light. Oh, that's, look at that, it's a, it's a violet. That one may work. Be pushed back a little bit. It might has a little bit of more violet in it than I want. So let's try this guy. He's a little duller, but he's a little darker. Gonna put him on hold, that may work. Let's see if I can find one. And right behind me is my pastel box. Okay. Okay, so see what's happened, what I've got here, these blue violets that are right here. And this one looks like the the value that I want from Stereo right back in here. So I'm just gonna slip that in. And this is where the, see, I'm going over. So this is where I want those ridges to show up. And this is the part over here that's a little bit more shaded. Now, when I paint down here, I could let some of this color show through. This is kind of a neutral guy. You know, it doesn't have that strong color in it. Uh, notice I'm just kind of creating that. So without doing an awful lot, I feel like I'm getting the motion. And I'm glad I didn't use this, this darker one that was right here. I don't think I need it. What I could use it for is just to tone down a little bit of the edges in here. Uh, just go like that so that guy may work out better in these darker little areas right here. And let's get some dune colors now. 
Okay, and the dunes are gonna fall between somewhere right in here. It's not gonna go this dark over here. It's gonna fall right here all the way through the light. We already tried some of the shadowy areas where that is. So let's try, well, that looks nice there. Hardly see it there. It looks a little lighter there. So it changes, same color. See what happened here? It looks darker than it does here. So I can use the same color in two different areas in my painting because it's going to look darker on the yellow than it is on the, so let's pull this guy up. It's going to look darker on this area right here than it is over here. Just by nature. And you can see the, the uh, texture showing up a little bit, maybe. Hard to tell on that. Slide that back over. So this guy will be really good. So I'm going to put him in this sh shadowed area. So I'm going to just, just like slightly drag him over. I don't want to. Now this line right here, I don't think I really want to have. So this will remind me to get rid of it because it's it's a hollow here. So I want to bring in some really nice light ones. And I want to feel really pretty warm. So same thing, this is where it's yellow. This is where it's a middle yellow orange. And this is where it's really orange. Okay, look at how much lighter it looks over here than it looks over here. Okay, and this this I this I keep right up when I'm painting that big one. So I've got it. So I'm gonna see where I've got my light, my light coming down. I want that to swing up. I wind up with that, and I'm gonna get something even lighter. And oh my gosh, I had this absolutely beautiful color. Hang on a second, where is it? It's over here because I used it in another painting. <laughs> And this is a beautiful, this is a really sun-soaked color. It's not white, it's a yellow white. See how different it'll look. It's probably gonna look bright on all of them. Yeah, looks bright on all of them. <laughs> so this guy's gonna be perfect for where I've got real strong light hitting. So I'm just gonna put that in here and I had kept most of my, and then I can just lift, okay? And I'm just gonna lift just a really light. So this is where I wanna have that hollow that's catching the light. And that's a yellow tinged color? It is, it's a yellow. It's a really, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's hard to see. I, I mean, I'd probably need some super max camera to be able to, you know, but it's not white. It's a, it's a yellow, it's a yellow white. There it is right there again. Yeah, I can see it better it's, there. It's so. a beauty. I'm going to have to try to remember what it is though. It's super soft. Look at how soft that is. That's super soft. It's not gritty. So it's not a, it, well, in the shape of it, it's not a tirage that you can certainly tell that. Um, my guess is it's probably something like, a, I would say it's probably a unison. It okay. could be, could be a great American, but I don't think so. I think it's, I don't think it's soft enough. Um, I, or I think it's too soft. Maybe it's, a, I'm looking at my little list over there. It could be a great American. Guess what? Great American's right up there on the list for super soft pastels. And I always keep forgetting about that. And I am just gonna come in here and I'm gonna pull out a different color because I'm looking in there and I feel like I wanna have something that's got like a little bit of a pizzazz where the um, grasses are gonna be. And the grasses really have um, a lovely warm feeling to some of them. So I'm gonna just check this color. Oh, this is like a muted rose color. The wrapper's still on it, okay? I would normally say take the wrapper off, but I don't want to lose what color it is. So I, this is just a, ooh, oh, that may look really nice in there. And I could get some green on top of that. Yeah, that, that color could look nice. I don't want to go too far back with it. 
and a little bit right in here. Let me just put like little marks of where I would want it. Not like this here either. This is another thing, a little color study. You can say, okay, I went a little bit crazy on that, that loop there. I'm gonna just drop that. And then I can always pick it back up and I can go like this so that it feels, and I can say, okay, I can bring a little bit more light in on this side right here and bring it over here. Just bring that up like that. But the color, the idea is for a color study, just to get a, just a starter palette. If you've taken my paint alongs, you know, I'm always giving you starter palettes. This is the exact same thing I do before I do a paint along. I do a little painting. And I figure out what colors we're putting it on, and I figure out what color we're going to start with, and then we can add to it. Ooh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try this back here. Let's see what this would do with a little bit of a glitter. Right back in there. That might, that might, that might work. And because, oh, you know that violet I had? That, remember this one here? I said, well, I wanted to try it. I'm going to just put a little bit of that right up against it. Just it's off in the distance uh, that because that violet next to that yellowy color. May wind up giving a little bit probably needs to be more yellow. It's too far in the background. It's not showing up. Let's try this. Here's a pretty bright red yellow. Isn't this nice? Someone gave me this um, this box. Great America are, are one of my favorite pastels. I love them. They're super soft. They've got great colors. Okay. I would not put a lot of yellow back here because yellow is a very um, clearly warm color. And I could always change that. I don't know. Maybe it would put a yellow in here. Mm, not sure I like the yellow with this in the foreground. You know what? I bet the yellow would be better off being used. Another thing with a color study. Okay, great. I don't like it there. No big deal. Go over it. I like this idea of this yellow. There's some of these uh, sweeps that could have like a little bit of a yellow touch to them. Add a little bit of light in there. I can take that same green that's in the background and that could wind up being where our now. I'm just going to stick them in. You're going to look a little bit like forks and spoons, but we'll just get that color in there. Just scoop that in there. Ooh, that, that may work out. It might work in the foreground. Not even back there. I'm going to get rid of it back there altogether. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. I think the color, the colors will go well together. I like this use of the, I like this blue that's back there. And when I um, have a color that's in the background, this is the light one. I think I'm gonna bring just a little bit of that blue into some of these little shaded areas. And I'm gonna just do a, like a little bit of a drag. And this is where there's that little bit of a scoop. So if I do a little light drag, that's more of what I wanted. It's something that's really subtle as opposed to something that's like really um, harsh. What's gonna happen when I start painting on this is this, this surface here is totally different because you can see, okay, if I tilt it like that, I mean, it's changing the light on it, but you can see where the um, marks of the texture are underneath. So I'm not gonna be able to get smooth lines like I can on a sheet of paper. But um, this whole format works out really nice for me. This is the way I do the majority of my studio paintings is, you know, I have my photograph. I reimagine the photograph. Uh, I do a, a value sketch. I often do a no tan. I tend to do a no tan if there's a very high contrast of um, light to dark. This one, there wasn't a high contrast. So it wasn't really as much of a, no tan as it was a, a you know just a value sketch that was that was more helpful for me um if there was a higher contrast you know i like doing the no tans and then the little color study 
and having the swatch there to be able to test the, the colors on. So, uh, so you didn't get to see me paint on the board, <laughs> but you saw the beginning process and, um, you know, I'll, I'll post things on, um, social media and, uh, maybe I'll film a little bit of what I've done for a little reel or something like that. So you can see a little bit, but any questions before we break up for this? Betsy, is your color study about six by eight? Yes. Uh, yes. I think it was. Uh, yes, the color study is six by eight. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was, that was proportional with it. Why do I have four and a half by six? I don't, I don't remember. Oh, maybe I was going to do it four and a half by six. And then I found a sheet of paper that was a uh, six by eight. That's probably what happened. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Um, yep. Betsy, I love the idea of creating that swatch to test on that has the same underpaint and colors because yeah. you really get the the true idea of what it's going to look like you do and you do I and to make this one step better if i had and i'm not really sure why i didn't think of it i should have toned the paper that i was doing the little color study on too but i didn't but um we we can use no, our but I, <laughs> yeah but this is kind of i like this i i like this way in some ways because then you you test it before you put it on that even if you had toned that paper Yep. You don't want to be testing on that paper. So correct. Correct. Yeah. Your... These, these swatch these, you know, I save all my ends now, clearly for this, I, I have a larger sheet so people can see it. Yeah. But I save my ends from when I, cause I buy the large sheets and I trim them down. There's always like two or three yep. inch, you know, uh, ends of the, the paper. Me too. Perfect. Perfect way to, yeah. let's say you're doing it on a tone surface and you've, you've bought this lovely, um, you know, color, you know, like a, the terracotta, that's the, one of the ones, you know, that I'm thinking of. Right. Uh, you've got the paper, keep the swatch to the side. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you, can, you can test the colors because they. you just saw mm -hmm. in that short amount of uh, distance between this and this, the way right. they put these colors, they just look different in different areas. Well, we didn't do it with the blues because I didn't put it down in the foreground. Uh, I'm putting this blue right here. Bless you, whoever that was. This blue right here. Okay, it's probably going to look dark. Ooh, it's going to look darker over there. Okay, so and that's why this is uh, the gradation there kind of mirrors the variety of values, not yeah. counting this one right here that I'm going to have, um, you know, in the painting. So the deconstructing. It's a lot of fun. It works out really well on the boards because you've got that stiffness, but you can do it on surface uh, painting surfaces. You just have to be very careful because what happens is, is you don't want to wind up lifting off the paper's surface. Marianne mm. had a very good question about if I wind up doing too much on the board. Yes, I can just go over it and I can add another layer of pumice on top of my underpainting. Yeah. Um, the beauty of the acrylic inks is they are very thin. They do not fill the tooth of the paper unless you oh. on surface, unless you put a lot on it, uh, okay. which is why I like it better than acrylic paint because acrylic paint, you have to thin it so much so it doesn't fill the surface that you lose the vibrant color that you started with. Whereas acrylic ink, you get what you what's in the jar or even if you've mixed. So it's a wonderful way of getting, vi and I love the vibrant colors underneath too. Yeah. yeah. Is that gator board that you use? It is, it's gator board. And this is okay. an 18 by 24 that I was working on. Okay. I yep. love the little, the little um, study that you have. It's, it's beautiful right there. I had, yeah, I had a customer, so I was away from watching for a few minutes. Then I came back and I'm like, oh, wow, she's got a whole painting already. <laughs> You know, with the color studies too, you could do three or four of them and say, okay, well, yeah. that didn't work. I mean, how long did it take to do it? And I know, I need to not, do more. You're not those. angsting over everything being perfect because your focus is color. Your right. focus is what is the color, what colors are working well together. Have I created that uh, foreground, background feeling that I wanted? Uh, mm -hmm. Do I have vibrancy where I want it? You know, so all those things play a part in it. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, glad, glad, glad you could be here for some of it, Lori. <laughs>
Any yep. other questions? I figure in an, in an art museum, they can't tell me not to watch an art museum. Oh, yes. Well, that's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> You're surrounded by art. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, thank Anyone you. Else? Okay. Well, Thanks, thank you Betsy. very much. Uh, you. You'll that get the recording fabulous. sometime over the weekend. Great. And um, uh, uh, then it'll also uh, announce the uh, the theme for the uh, paint along, which is uh, in another, I think it's two weeks. Yeah. I have it slated for, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so okay. much. It was lovely. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.